aquí en Auto 060 y bueno, eh, pasamos de hablar de autos eléctricos de esta compañía nueva en Detroit y ahora vamos a hablar de otro, de otra fuente de poder de autos diesel. Y para esto vamos a cambiar el inglés otra vez. We are uh, going to switch back to English. We were talking about a new company in Detroit, about uh, Detroit Electric, which uh, just launched a new model, uh, a new, actually, they, they, re they relaunched the company. The company has been in existence for a long time. And now we're going to talk to Alan Shepherd. Um, from um, to talk about diesel cars. How are you, Alan? I'm great. How are you? Thank you very much for uh, calling again. Uh, we talked to you, I think, about a, a year ago, right? Uh, yeah. About um, how diesels have finally coming back to the U.S. And um, you work for the Institute uh, to promote the diesel technology here in the States, right? That's right. We do. We've got some, uh, you know, pretty exciting news looking at the success and sales and registrations of new diesel cars, pickup trucks, and SUVs. Yeah, that that was pretty amazing. I was looking at the numbers. Uh, actually, all the no the sales in general have gone up here in the states, uh, which is a great news for for the whole industry. But the diesels in particular, I, I read that they surpassed the hybrids. Is that for the first time that this happened? We have had uh, actually a superiority over hybrids. This is registrations of diesel vehicles now, including pickup trucks. There's about 6.65 million diesels registered in the U.S. and about 2.3 million hybrids registered. So um, I think that the differential really reflects the, the pickup trucks being the predominant uh, uh, base of the diesel uh, market here in the U.S. for quite a while, although in the last two years we've seen a huge increase in the number of options available for consumers in the passenger car um, segment so that's i think going to really help fuel the growth in the future yeah and is there any particular model that is leading the pack i guess both but i mean the germans are coming up with that uh, they have had more models available for a long, longer time right exactly you've got it that the uh, volkswagen has had more options for consumers for for quite a while and today they have uh, diesels available on almost all of their uh, all of their uh, car options and audi has it almost in all of their uh, vehicle options or they will by the uh, by the end of the year so with more and more choices like that we expect there to be even more interest in, in diesel in the future and uh, the data that we've just looked at shows that we've had really quite uh, quite significant um, success in getting uh, more consumers buying diesel. Um, the sales are up by 24% um, in 2012 over the 2010 year. So uh, that's good news and it reflects more models coming in as you suggest. I think um, as we as we get these more choices, you're going to see um, choices in segments that haven't been available before. Probably the, the two I would note right uh, for this year um, first is the Ram 1500 truck yeah uh, this this is a, 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 a sort of a light duty pickup truck that's going to have a diesel engine for the first time and it will be the first of those light duty pickup trucks to offer a diesel and uh, the Ram 1500 has been named truck of the year um, in its you know current gasoline form so having a diesel option there I think is going to really sweeten the uh, uh the interest in, in the ram truck in the future the other two vehicles coming this year which are going to be very interesting is the first uh u.s manufacturer to bring a diesel car and that's chevrolet um, yeah with the cruise chevy, right the chevy cruise is uh about to hit showrooms uh, i think later this month it's going to be available to the chevy cruise uh, clean diesel Um, is just rated by EPA at 46 miles a gallon highway. Which is better and than most, uh, than some hybrids. <laughs> it, it is, and I, you know, I think uh, that car also has a range of 800 miles on a single tank of fuel. That's amazing. We, we, you can, well, I can drive from here to Miami to your office and uh, still have some gas left, I think. <laughs> Ab absolutely. That, we, that's our, our version of range anxiety is that, that your bladder is going to have to stop before your fuel <laughs> tank is empty. Exactly. Uh, and I was seeing uh, your uh, latest uh, release on this, uh, the increase of the registration for diesel cars, and you divided by uh, the country in the top 10 states. And no surprise, California, it's, uh, well, Texas number one because of the pickup trucks. I mean, that's pretty yep. much a uh, given, I think. But California, I guess, uh, the gas is more expensive there than most of the country because of taxes. And uh, is that the case with diesel there in California, too? It is, and, and there's there's definitely, a, California even has a slight variation on the quality of diesel fuel that's different than the rest of the country, so Which diesel is more, uh, a premium. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's um, 
or restringent or it has to be much cleaner or what is it okay. yeah it's it's um they've they've adjusted the sort of the formula for diesel to to have uh, less impact on the smog formation there because the the smog is so bad in southern california so the california diesel is a little bit different than the federal diesel uh, fuel from that perspective and that adds to the cost so um, but you're right, the top 10 states, you know, Texas number one, California number two, Florida number three, um, Washington State, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Colorado, Georgia, Oregon, and Ohio. That's, that's our top 10 list. If you look at just the kind of the fastest growing, the ones that have had the most uh, change over that uh, 2010 through last year, uh, that's an even more interesting list that um, California, Massachusetts, and New York are the states, the top three, that have seen the fastest growth rate in diesel registration there. So, um, and those are quite progressive states when you think about yeah, absolutely. environment and energy and clean air policy. So, you know, I think it, uh, it, it just reflects how people are looking at uh, this new generation of diesel technology as being uh, very competitive in, uh, with fuel economy, uh, competing with hybrids, and in some cases doing better than hybrids, and uh, really being the kind of vehicle and technology suited for the way people want to live and uh, drive long distances or uh, city driving. The diesel can do it all, and, and that's not the case uh, for some other uh, kinds of technology. Yeah, and even though the numbers are growing, I don't see yet that as much of uh, advertisement uh, from the manufacturers on these um, kind of models, uh, which surprises me because, I mean, they're like great, great cars. I mean, I just uh, recently drive, uh, drove the GL 350 Blue Tech from Mercedes-Benz and that car, uh -huh. I was surprised because that's a huge SUV and the range was about like 570 miles on that car. Yeah, and you know you're right. I mean, I think we we would uh, we would love to see more uh, public discussion and advertising uh, by manufacturers for these vehicles. I I think we will certainly see more of that when the cruise comes out and uh, the Ram truck uh, availability will will boost that a little bit. Uh, I didn't talk about Mazda, but uh, later this year oh, Mazda yeah, is coming Skytel. out. Yeah, the Sky Active D. Uh, that's going to be a really interesting technology that uh, uh, is going to be available in the Mazda 6. And I think that's going to be unrolled sometime later in the fall. So, you know, by the end of this year, consumers are going to have some really uh, more interesting choices than they've, they've had in the past from uh, Chevy and from Ram and from Mazda, three, three players that weren't in the diesel car business uh, or in the pickup truck business in the case of Ram um, before. So... Uh, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll say stand by and, and see what uh, great success these vehicles bring. But the the long term view on this is that you know today we have uh, 24, I believe it is, numbers of choices of diesel cars and pickup trucks for consumers. And uh, by some accounts of, of manufacturers and suppliers kind of looking down the road, we could expect to see that number double or more uh, by 2015. So as Manufacturers are trying to meet these new corporate fuel economy standards set by EPA. Uh, they're looking to the diesel to help do that. So yeah. um, there's more to come. Absolutely. We're talking with Alan Sheffer, Executive Director of the Diesel Technology Forum. And uh, Alan, for those people who are still not convinced about the diesel uh, car or truck or SUV or whatever, what can you tell them? Um, uh, we don't have too much time, we have like two or three minutes, but uh, yeah. what are the main advantages of having a diesel uh, vehicle, even though diesel is still more expensive than regular gas? Yeah, well, I think, uh, first of all, diesel is going to get you uh, uh, get you more bang for your buck. You're going to get about 30% or better, uh, more miles per gallon than you'll get with a comparable gasoline vehicle. The driving experience with the diesel, if you like pickup and, and quick start, uh, diesel's got a lot of power in the low end. We call that low end torque and uh, very suitable for uh, starting out from zero, getting up to 30, 50 miles an hour pretty quick. Uh, people love that in terms of how they drive. Uh, people are more able to find diesel fuel today than ever before. More than half of all stations in the U.S. have at least one diesel pump. And okay. with cars that have these tremendous range, you know, you really don't need to be stopping for fuel that often. So really the best advice you can give to people is uh, take a long view, look at diesel from, uh, you know, not a, a day, one year or day perspective. Look at it three to five years and you're going to see a payback in fuel savings and 
and just have a vehicle that you're going to be really happy with. And at the end of the day, get yourself down to a dealership that has a diesel car and take it for a spin because uh, experiencing the new generation of diesel technology, if you haven't done that, um, that that will uh, I think that'll really seal the deal. Then you really understand what we're talking about. We say yeah. diesel is really there's good, no, clean, fun. There's no heavy black smoke or any weird noises coming out of the engine, right? <laughs> That's right. Absolutely well, not. Thank you very much, Alan Sheffer, Executive Director of the Diesel Technology Forum, uh, for your time and uh, the information. It is really great, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon again. Great. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Pues ahí tienen la nueva ola de autos diesel. Ahí está empezando Mazda con el Mazda 6. El Chevy Cruz va a salir también. Eh, la Ram 1500, la pickup truck va a salir con motor diesel. Eh, información muy, muy, muy interesante sobre la nueva tecnología de los autos diesel, motores nuevos, más eficientes, más limpios. Y aunque, como decía nuestro invitado Alan Sheffer del eh, Instituto sobre el Diesel, eh, es un poco más caro al principio, pero hay que mirar la the big picture, la, la, el, a largo plazo las cosas. Y un auto dice les va a funcionar mucho mejor, así que pongan atención a eso. No se vayan que cuando regresemos vamos a hablar de Sony y Sony con los autos. Una conversación muy interesante. Esto es Auto 060, yo soy Javier Mota.